Praise the Lord. We welcome you all to our live broadcast this Sunday, September 20, 2020. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for the week. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your people, your children, and those who become your children at the hearing of your word. Bless their homes, bless their hearts. Break yokes and seal them with the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, our Father and our God, for this day. Holy Spirit, have your way and lead the proceedings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our instrument are taken today from our calibration on YouTube. Like we told you last Sunday, we're discussing a topic that every soldier of Christ, every child of God ought to know. Darkness envelops the world. Outline, human responsibility, the kingdom of darkness, its organization, the kingdom of darkness, its operations. Number four, evidence that the world is immersed in darkness. Then number five, how soldiers of Christ, children of God, can navigate in a world immersed in darkness and still be productive and fruitful in Jesus' name. Human responsibility. God created the earth. Fill them with animals, trees, birds of the air. And he gave them the earth to human beings to oversee. In addition, they were to populate the earth. At creation, God knew that human beings, giving them free will, could make them to disobey him. But he created them in his image and likeness. So out of love, he gave them free will, the right to choose, the right to obey or disobey him. He wanted human beings to have agency over their lives. Otherwise, they would be like robots. And that free will meant they had the right to determine their own future. The right to choose good, light, or evil, darkness. Adam and Eve, our first parents, exercised their agency and chose darkness. They disobeyed God and obeyed the prince and ruler of the kingdom of darkness. Their choice set in motion in veins that have continued to reverberate throughout human history. Because they obeyed the prince of darkness, they lost control of the world to him. Note that when we speak about the world, we are talking about descendants of Adam and Eve occupying planet Earth. The Earth is always the Lord's. But God loved fallen humanity. And so he had to sacrifice his son. So that human beings don't end up in the lake of fire meant for the prince of darkness and his co-travelers or his gods. As a second Adam, Christ wrested the control of the world from the prince and ruler of the kingdom of darkness. Having regained control, Christ gave all human beings the opportunity to leave Satan's rule and to follow him. But of course they could choose to remain under the rule of the Prince of Darkness. As a result of Christ's sacrifice, the Prince of Darkness can never stop any human being from leaving his kingdom, that's Satan's kingdom. He can't. But Christ will never force those who choose to remain in the kingdom of darkness to come out. And he will also 
never force those who believe in him, but backslide to come back to him. He will only plead, but he can never force. He's God. Praise the Lord. We have taken time to establish that human beings have the freedom to make choices. But also they are responsible for the outcomes of their choices. Our teaching today does not in any way obviate or remove that human responsibility. Lest you say tomorrow, oh, demons are now causing me to do ABC. No, no, please. Human beings are responsible for the choices they have made or we make. Praise the Lord. Twenty-first century human beings are responsible for the darkness that has enveloped our world. Their unbelief and rejection of God's love has brought about the possession of so many human beings by demons. Billions of human beings, I didn't say millions, I said billions of human beings on earth today have allowed themselves to be programmed by the prince of darkness and other evil spirits resulting in demonic infiltration and control of their minds. Oftentimes, these evil spirits initiate and direct the actions of so many. That's the reason why so many people believe lies today. And they lie. But disbelieve God's truth. I'm going to read the first scripture. First scripture, please. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Human beings have made a choice and darkness has come on the earth. It's no longer hovering in the air. It's here now and it's immersed the whole world. Next item on the agenda, today's summer. The kingdom of darkness, its organization. Scripture, please. I read from Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 17. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? Praise the Lord for the reading of his word from Isaiah. Isaiah is describing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the leader of the spirits who are opposed to God's plan for human beings, the same one that went into the Garden of Eden to deceive Eve. He calls him here Lucifer, son of the morning. Some will call him other names. But he's the same person, Satan, devil, whatever name you give him, he is the king of the kingdom of darkness. And in verses 16 to 17, we saw his overarching influence. That is, the influence is so pervasive in world affairs. He deceived the nations. He says, is this the man, in verse 16b, who made the earth tremble? Who showed kingdoms? Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities? And who kept many people in bondage? That's the leader of the Kingdom of darkness. Next scripture, please. I read from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of darkness is very well organized. At this head is Satan, Lucifer, or son of the morning, or shining star, son of the morning, son of dawn, day star, son of dawn, at the hem. Doesn't matter what name. He goes by different names. Is he not the act deceiver? Following under him are principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. After them, you have multitude of evil spirits and demons. Any spirit that is not of God is evil. So all of them, including Satan, are all evil spirits. The next item, please. The kingdom of darkness, its operations. How do they operate? Next scripture, please. I read from Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 to 14, and then verses 20 to 21. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Then he said, do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these, except Michael, your prince. Praise the Lord. Prior to this vision by Daniel, he had received other ones. He was in Babylon, taken in his youth. And in that time, Persia had conquered Babylon. So Persia was now the new empire. It was during the period of the kingdom of Persia that he saw the visions just, we just read. So what do we learn from what we have read? There are powers, spirits that influence worldly kingdoms, empires and their rulers. And there we see that Persian Empire, which came after the fall of Babylonian Empire, would fall also. And Greece, Prince of Persia, of Greece, will be the next kingdom or world empire. Spirits are behind worldly kingdoms. They fight God's angels. They are working against God and his plans for humanity. They are opposing God's plans. But always remember, God's angels will always prevail. Praise the Lord. In the same manner that the prince of Persia was influencing Persia, and prior to that time, the prince of Babylon, principalities and powers are influencing many activities taking place in the continents and countries and nations of the 21st century world. Very important to note that. That there are powers behind political, religious, economic, and technological developments in the world. If you don't know that fact as a soldier of Christ, you'll be in error. It's not to frighten you. When you know, then you know how to tackle your prayers and how to subdue. Principles and powers because you have the power and authority. Praise the Lord. God revealed the operations to Daniel and to us. Like Daniel, we must pray, intercede for the salvation of the billions of human beings under demonic influence. Our prayers can minimize or even stop their influence on our loved ones, family, friends. On pastors and Jews who have gone into the world. On political and commercial leaders. But above all, to free those in bondage. Praise the Lord. 
I want you to note something. Satan's plan is always to create chaos in the world. The more the chaos, the better. He doesn't take sides in conflicts he has inspired. <laughs> you are surprised. No, he has no, he doesn't take sides. He doesn't love any, any of the sides. He takes all sides of conflicts, quarrels, and arguments. He'll be on S side, he'll be on B side, because the whole idea is create more confusion. As arguments, quarrels, conflicts get heated up. Often, 